Here's a sneak peek at what's coming up on Ambitious Adventures. We're gonna be talking to some of the world's top personal brands, from a former professional athlete turned lifestyle entrepreneur, to the expert, to the experts, to a guy who's created a personal brand all about the pizza. This is their Ambitious Adventure. I'm Greg, a best-selling author and media personality who sold millions of dollars of products and services to help entrepreneurs start and grow their business. I'm Brandon, a podcaster and crowdfunding expert that throws events across the country to help young entrepreneurs create their next six to seven figure business. And we are traveling the country to get the stories and lessons of entrepreneurs who risked it all in order to share their products and their message with the world. This is Ambitious Adventures. Today in business, it's a must to be a celebrity and to have a strong personal brand. Think about guys like Richard Branson and Tony Robbins of the world. Even progressive insurance has flow, but what about you? Why should you want to become a celebrity or a personality in your business and how do you even go about doing it? We set out to Hollywood, California to talk with some of the biggest personal brands in the business space to help uncover the key advantage points that can help you step out of the shadows and into the spotlight. How can somebody out there listening like that wants to do their own podcast, how can they stand out? Because you obviously found a lot of great people. Yeah. And how can they grow it? It depends. If you're looking to do an interview show, I think it's a lot more challenging to do yeah. today. Because mm -hmm. there's over 400,000 podcasts out there. So I would almost yeah. tell you not to do an interview podcast unless it's going to be unique or different yeah. or in a different industry. If you're just going to do another entrepreneurial podcast, it's already been done a thousand times. We don't need another one. We don't anymore. Yeah. Unless you're interviewing people that have never been interviewed. Unless you have access to CEOs or obscure entrepreneurs or niche. it's a specific niche. Yeah. Otherwise, everyone's been interviewed so many times. And that's why I try not to have many entrepreneurs on my show. So I'm constantly thinking about how can I protect my audience. you got to find ways to add a lot of value. Find ways to really figure out what matters to that person. The person, yeah. Meatloaf was just in the studio here an hour ago and he's got an, a record out right now. One of his previous albums is the fifth selling album of all time. <laughs> I will do anything. <laughs> is that how he sounds? <laughs> <laughs> but no, he, but he had Meatloaf there that day. And like, Meatloaf isn't being interviewed on the typical podcast. No. And I think that's what makes Lewis so unique is that's who's on his podcast. And he's so clear about it. he wants people like that, great people, and that's how he's built his brand. So a big part of your own personal brand is sports, from you know college football to the arena ball to handball, traveling all over the world. Now there's no handball court right outside, but your assistant did tell us there's a basketball court yes. a few blocks away. You down to uh, shoot a little hoops? I'm oh, in. Let's do it. Photos is a huge part of your brand. Yeah, it's everything. For me, photos became important when I saw the value a couple years ago when I launched this website and everyone started talking about it. Like, yeah. Everyone was like, holy cow. Like, and I just said, okay, I'm gonna start investing in photography more and more and more, and not just once every couple of years, but every, every, every month if I months, could, yeah. yeah. Just to enhance the continued feeling of inspiration, for me, that's what it's about. I wanna see you dunk it. Greg, you said you could dunk it. You can dunk, Greg? Some days. I think we set ourselves up for failure. Instead of playing horse, we should have did two on one. We should have been me and you versus Lewis. He probably still would have been. Well, at least you could try to dunk. I couldn't even get close to dunking it. You tried it. Good job. Oh! We walked all the way to the basketball court, played horse for like 2.5 minutes, and then it was game over. And then he took us to the roof. And this was really, really cool because it really is the epitome of greatness and why he's so great. When you look out and, and see the view, I mean, what, where does your mind go? What do, you, what do you think about? I think about expansion. I, I think about anything that's possible. I think about every vision or dream I have is something that I could eventually create if everything lines up in the right way. 
So if you wanna follow in Lewis's shoes and start your own podcast, it starts by figuring out who your first podcast guest is going to be. Schedule that interview. The second thing is you need to add value to that person, meaning you should have distribution for your podcast. Hopefully you have more than three people listening to your show, but you need to add value to them outside of you just taking up their time in an interview. And the third thing that you should do is then ask that person who else you should interview, who else might be great for the show, and that's gonna expand your network and help you to build your personal brand. When we get back on Ambitious Adventures. This is my favorite pizza in Los Angeles. And I love it so much. I eat it pretty much every day. Carlo is one of the top cinematographers in Hollywood. He's worked with guys like Ryan Seacrest and the Kardashians and Snoop Dogg and just every, anyone and everyone who's in Hollywood. And now he's in front of the camera hosting his own show. His first show was called All the Pizza where he gets to travel the world talking about pizza. Something that we all love and enjoy, he got paid to eat pizza. And so we wanted to see how Carlo grew his personal brand from not even knowing the language to rubbing shoulders with some of Hollywood's elite. So Carlo, why did you why did you want to go from Italy to Hollywood, California? I, I came here many times before I decided to move here and like kind of like on vacation. And I lived in Parma for 10 years before I moved here where they make prosciutto and Parmesan cheese. It's delicious. And that's what we're gonna have tonight too, a little, a little slice of my hometown. It was the hardest thing I've ever done, to move here and try to make it happen. But I came here on vacation and all these friends were working on cool projects and I got to be part of it and I was just like, wow, this place people do what they love. And I was looking at jobs in movies and I'm like, wow, that's a job, that's a career. Every, every position I was just like, that's insane, that makeup artist, it's a career here. Or the background extra, the background extra is a career here that people do their whole life and you make good money out of it. So, Carlo, we're here at Desano. Tell us about this place. Yeah, this is my favorite pizza in Los Angeles. I eat it pretty much every day. Really? So I usually keep it simple. So I get the margarita doc, or DOP, the origine protesta, right, I guess. And it's very simple. You can taste the simplicity of the, and the quality of the ingredients, like one by one. I usually, so is there a thing, like get it small because that's a Neapolitan size. Don't get it the big one, even though it's more convenient, the big one. The small one has like a better texture. Okay, so this has brought us the pizza and this is probably like the most delicious one here. But I still love the simplicity of the margarita. margarita. It's pure happiness. In all the pizza, what has that show done for you? In your brand. In like your brand. who you are. Mm. Now for myself, I get recognized sometimes when I go to a pizza spot and I'm like, oh, Carlo from all the pizza. <laughs> really? <laughs> Very few, like comparing to, you know, other friends that I have that are like mm -hmm. actors in movies and TV shows, like they get recognized all the time. But I had like my little moment of like celebrity and 100% happened in pizza places, which is. <laughs> <laughs> so I think most of the time we think about personal brands, we think about the people in front of the camera. We think about the Kardashians, the Seacrests, the you know guys we've, we've talked to here, the Jake Pauls, the Lewis Houses. You're starting to build your personal brand in front of the camera, but you have a really strong brand behind the camera. So do you think that your own personal brand helps you to get I think so. those I better think jobs and things like that? When you do these kind of jobs, you don't want only to have good product, which everybody does in LA, because they're working in LA. So, every, so, so you so have to LA, buy. everyone can turn the camera on. Exactly. Right. And do a good job. Yeah. Like, really talented people are here. But I feel like the most important thing here is the personality. So you, who you are. Like, people want to work with you because it's because of you. And I just have a great time. Every time I work, I just have the best time ever. Like, the moment I show up at 6 in the morning, like, let's have a great time today. <laughs> it's going to be a great time. You know, yeah. you leave the studios, whatever location, and you're like, oh, wow, that went. That was good, that was fun. And then you reward yourself with a pizza at the end. <laughs> Carlo had the passion for pizza, and he's actually turned that into a career. And I believe for any business, that passion is what drives you to become successful in business, no matter what it is. But passion is just the beginning. You can be passionate about something, but you have to put in the work to be able to make it to the top. He put in all the work from the beginning to get to where he is today. Carlo is the best tour guide we could have asked for in Hollywood. Not only did he service the best pizza in town, 
but he also showed us the best view, the Griffith Observatory. You were sweeping floors when you first came here. Like you were doing things that Pretty most much. people wouldn't do. Yeah. What kept you going to get to where you are today? I mean, if you have you set yourself goals to where you want to be, yeah. you just work until you get there, and then you set new goals, and then you keep growing. Just work really hard. Just work Not as stop. hard <laughs> as you can. Because there's, you know, if you're not available, they will come somebody else. If you're yeah. tired or if you don't want to do things, they will. There's always somebody else ready to do that. You know. Just. So what do you think you did that made you so unique to stand out enough to get to where you are? So sometimes I find myself working with people that they don't love what they do. Yeah. And I don't get it because if you don't love what you do, do something else. <laughs> <laughs> Simple as that. Yeah. 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 Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. To me, it's not even work. It's just fun, you know? And I just love, even, I mean, at the beginning, it was fun to me because it was like on a movie set and everything. <laughs> and I was just loving it. Just, you know, even if you're doing craft service and putting out trash yeah. can and cleaning the floor yeah. after, I, I don't know, an explosion or something because you're a PA. <laughs> and I've done that many times, you know, and I'm putting back the, the house that you're renting, cleaning the toilets, yeah. like, we, we've done that. And, but you're thinking like the bigger picture. You're not thinking what you're doing right now in that specific moment, you're, you're thinking, thinking of the bigger go. picture. Yeah, so you just step up, step up, step up, step up, and you grow, and then eventually you get where you want to go. Well, clearly, we got a bigger picture now. Look where that's, we're at. That's also why I love this town. This is, <laughs> like, this is always like this, any, any day of the year. So in order to go where the action is and, to, and immerse yourself in that culture, the first thing that you need to do is you need to educate yourself. You need to listen to the podcasts and read the books and check out the forums and groups and communities of you know what's happening in that industry. After you educate yourself, well, then you need to get off the couch and go to those places, physically go to those places. Is there a meetup group? Is there an event? Is there a workshop? Is there a place where they all congregate? You need to go there. And the third thing that you need to do is you need to ask questions and you need to get to know what other people are up to and what projects they're working on. And ultimately that'll lead them to saying, hey, can you help us out? And it will get you that break that you've been looking for. Up next on Ambitious Adventures. So what is a celebrity shower? Well, I like to explain the celebrity shower is a uh, half gentleman, half lady of the night. <laughs> <laughs>
the funny thing about it, you'll find if you name something, it becomes a thing. Yes. If you don't name something, people don't That's know what to point. ask for, they don't know what to call it. Like, like when you go to order vodka, you order Grey Goose. If you go to order tequila, you go for Patron. You go for something with a brand. So as you're creating your own brand, why not make it fun? So one of the things we started doing was we started creating our own drink called the Celebrity Sour. And then it's spread across the nation. People now go, it's a lot of people's favorite drink. I mean, yeah. Greg had it with me first, you love it. Exactly. It's great. And so now people want the Celebrity Sour. And so we have to teach our bartenders when we go, when people come up the rest of the night and ask for Celebrity Sour, that's what they mean. You know, you've taken the concept of the drink, but really everything you've built around that. So celebrity branding is a term that you own. Celebrity expert. The celebrity sour, the celebrity cigar, like what has that meant to your brand and how you connect to your, your customers, your clients, and, and just people when you meet them? It creates community. When people speak a common language, they become part of a community. So you see it in, in every city in America. We're in Los Angeles. You have a big Hispanic culture here. People who speak Spanish or ads that are in Spanish or clubs that specialize in Latin nights, they draw in a certain community. And so yeah. when you speak their language, they come to you and that's your community. So when you create the language, you create the community, you control the community. One of the really cool things that you've been able to do is you don't just help people become experts. You've really kind of taken it to the next level and talked about celebrity experts. And you know what every celebrity expert needs to have? What's that? A red carpet photo. Hey. <laughs> yeah. So you guys have the red carpets out tonight. The lights are going to be on. Can you show us how to take a Let's good do it. red we carpet do our photo? Best. We can do it with drinks or without because there's both. you can do both ways. Let's try it. Let's, let's, let's try, try it. Yeah, let's try both. Yeah, cool. so let's head on let's over. Let's go this way. All right, we'll do it this way. All right, so since we're doing drinks this time, everyone get your drink ready. And what you want to do is you want to put one foot in front of the other because okay. it allows you to lean forward a little bit because whatever's closest to the camera looks biggest. So you want to kind of lean forward so your face is bigger than your belly. So one foot forward, you just uh, put your head forward. They usually take two, three, or four because people might blink. You got to get it right. So just sit there and smile for a minute. Try to hold it. And the secret is try to smile with your eyes because you got to think of something that makes you happy because if yeah. not, it will look like a dead smile. You can actually tell if people are really so smiling I'm or faking. I'm pitching a very good looking woman right now. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> you know, whatever does it for you, just get it done. So all right. So then another one we can do is we can put our drinks down here. Um, you want to be friendly on the red carpet too, so we can kind of do one like this. You got to be careful how you do this because if you go too wide, you can have a big belly and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, but we can try it like this. That, that's got to look good. So, so what's the difference between just an expert and a celebrity expert? What, what takes them to that, that next level? A celebrity is somebody who you're drawn to and who you want to talk about. Yeah. So when you become a celebrity expert, you go beyond merely being an expert at what you do. You go to becoming a shareable expert, somebody that your clients and prospects want to tell their friends and family that they get to work with you. So yeah. when you're the celebrity expert dentist, yeah. your clients are out going like, hey man, I got my teeth cleaned today by the coolest guy. You gotta hear he's the best selling author. He's been on TV, he's great. You gotta go see him. It just cha totally changes everything. They <laughs> that's promote usually not what I say about yeah. my dentist exactly. after leaving the dentist. <laughs> they, yeah. that's, they promote for you. And so that's yeah. where you wanna get to as a celebrity expert. You wanna make it so that you are ultimately shareable. People wanna share you with their friends, their family, their audience, because it gives them credibility to even know you. So if you want to take that personal brand to the next level and become that celebrity, it all starts with putting yourself in situations that celebrities would be put in. So if celebrities are on the red carpet, get on the red carpet. If celebrities are writing books, you need to write a book. If celebrities are on TV, get yourself on TV. The second thing you need to do is you need to then share those celebrity moments. So on your social media pages, in your emails, in your newsletters, you know, share those celebrity moments. Share your book, share your red carpet photos, share those photos of you with celebrities because now that's starts to create that association in the minds of everyone else that you are indeed a celebrity. And the third thing is you wanna start creating your own platform. Create your own podcast, create your own video show, create your, you know, write your own books and your own articles, and all that media starts to position you as the celebrity expert in your field. Hollywood. It really is the place where stars are born. But it doesn't mean that you can't create Hollywood magic wherever you are right now. As Lewis Howes and Jake Paul taught us, building your personal brand starts by creating your own media platform. Whether that's a video series, a podcast show, or a blog, today anyone can become a media brand. We saw that true stars really love what they do. Whether he's filming celebrities behind the camera or traveling the world eating pizza, Carlo taught us to find our passion and don't stop the things that make us feel alive. And finally, to really turn it up a notch, Nick Nanton and Jack Canfield taught us to put ourselves in the center of the action and let the bright light shed a spotlight on our work. But before we can say goodbye to Hollywood, there's just one more thing we had to do. 
had to Google the lyrics to this one. I say, ah, ah, push that bus. Everybody move to the back of the bus. Do you want to crump and slump with us? Who's we the type of people make the club get crunk? I say, ah, ah, push in that bus. Everybody move to the back of the bus. We don't know when the song ends. We ain't rehearse, so we just keep going till the night begins because we freestyling off the top of the dome. BC on the guitar, Giro on the microphone. We be rocking it. Best sellers in the audience. Raise your hands up, raise up the glass. We go, we go rocking, we go party. All night, Nick Dana got a drink in the left, drinking the right. Sean Bella on the cameras, make me look all good, smiling up, but we be doing it for the who we got. Girlies on the stage, stand on the front, doing it, man. We gon' rock until we drunk, drinking lots. I would like a drink, somebody get me off the stage, cause I stink. We rockin', we rockin', and we be rolling crazy. Best selling summer, yeah, do we do the baby like how? Pushing that bus, I got nothing left. I'm about to go take a nap, so I'll see y'all later. Still drinking out there. Oh, Greg, I got your phone up here. Nice photos. 